Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to be showing you the PlayStation 4 remote play feature working on Apple iOS devices like this little Apple iPod. So let's just go into this game here, Horizon Zero Dawn and if you can have a look I've got it on the monitor up there but I've got the remote play working on this little iPod here and if you have a look because I've got the PlayStation connected up via a LAN cable and because I've got a good Wi-Fi signal on this here, it works really well with very little lag. Right, okay, so in the video I'm going to be talking about what you need to set it up. I'm going to be talking about these MFI controllers and I'm also going to be taking this remotely because right now this is working off the Wi-Fi off the same network in the house. But I can take this absolutely anywhere, connect it up to my mobile phone hotspot and then use it anywhere I want. So I'll be doing that later in the video. Right, let's get started. Okay, so what do you need to do this? You will need to download an app called RPlay from the App Store. Now, RPlay is a chargeable app. It costs just under 10 UK pounds. And I must say this, it is unofficial. This is not a Sony product. So Sony, as they start updating their PlayStation, will get rid of this app. So you might only get a few weeks out of it. You might get a few months out of it. You might get a year, but it will be closed down as and when Sony do the updates because they don't support remote play on Android devices or Apple iPhones, iPads and iPods. So this app has done the rounds before, before it was called Playcast, then it was called Miracast or Miracast and both times it was closed down between three and six months. So only do this if you don't mind spending the £10 knowing that it might only last a few weeks. But when it's working, it works really, really well. Now basically, there's all different settings you can do and it is so easy to set up. All you need to set it up is, you just need your gamer tag, so your online ID, and also the number that PlayStation give you when you go to remote play. So if, for example, you go to the main menu and go up to settings, if you go down to remote play connection settings. All you have to do there is tick the box that says enable remote play. And then if you go down to add device, what it will do, it will give you a number. So right now it's given me that number and that number will be valid for 300 seconds. You need to enter that number into the app when you first all set it up and your gamer tag as well. So whatever your online ID or gamer tag, whatever you want to call it, you enter in that as well. And basically it will also, the app will also set up that when you're playing away from home, like the internet play, because that's what you want as well. Now also you will have to go onto the power settings to enable you to wake it up via the LAN because when you put your PlayStation into standby you want the app to be able to wake it up remotely. So if you go down to power saving settings and press X and then if you go to set features available in rest mode and press X you want to tick the box that says stay connected to the internet and also you want to enable turning on of the PS4 from networks. If you tick those two boxes what it will allow you to do is when you're essentially dialing into your network from your iPod or your iPhone, then it will allow this to wake up your PS4 so you can play the games you want remotely. Right, okay, so once that's set up, it's really straightforward. First time I did it, it didn't connect. And then I just tried it again and it did connect. So if it doesn't connect the first time, just do it a few times. Also, if you're doing this remotely, Obviously, try make sure it works in the house before you go 100 miles away and try it. So what I do is I just set up the hotspot on my mobile cell phone and then I connect the iPod via Wi-Fi to my mobile phone hotspot and then I can use it that way. Now in this app, you've got loads of settings and you've got really good instructions as well. If you were to go to that question mark there, it really explains it in very good English how to do things. And the settings... You can have the video resolution 360, 540 or 720. And if you're connecting from a PlayStation Pro, then it could be 1080p as well. So that's pretty impressive. 
and also you've got a video frame rate you can choose between 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second well what I've done is because I'm gaming on such a small little iPod I've just kept it at a low resolution so I've done 540p because remember this screen here on the iPod is only going to be slightly above that I think the iPod screens about six this is a, a sixth generation I think the iPod screens about 640 so 540 isn't really much below that and I've kept it at 30 frames per second if you've got a really good connection of course you can up that to 60 frames per second and you can up the resolution as well depending on the device you're connecting to now when it comes to controlling it this is where things like this get really let down because the screen's so small it does give you buttons on the screen so I'll just show you that now I'm just going to connect again so you can see I've got little buttons here where I can move around go back but as you see it's so small to use it really is fiddly and you've got your little analog sticks hidden here but really to me that's unusable yes you can get by and you can just about get it to work but this is the thing that makes this really impressive these things here these are called MFI controllers and MFI just stands for made for iPhone iPod iPad so basically they're things that's supported by Apple now I really like this particular one here and some of them are so cheap this thing was made for basically the uh, iPhone and the iPod 5s but it also fits the iPod 6 generation because it's the same size as the iPod 5 now when it first of all came out it was really expensive but I bought this about a week ago from Amazon and it cost just over seven UK pounds and it's fantastic so let me just show you the box of that just in case you're interested it's called a Moga Ace Power so if you just type that into Amazon you'll find it and seven pound is dirt cheap and the good thing about it is you've got the whole range of everything now don't expect it to be as good as your PlayStation 4 controller because it's not you're only paying seven pounds like the analog sticks are quite flat and also they're a bit uh, there's quite a lot of resistance on them but you do get used to them so you've got your two analog sticks you've got your buttons here you've got your shoulder buttons and you've got your directional pad now the only thing you haven't got which is really important on some games is you haven't got the L3 and the R3 so for example when you click in the analog sticks so on Horizon Zero Dawn you need to click in the analog stick to be able to run but the good thing is, on the app, the RPlay app, it allows you to do a certain combination of buttons. For example, so to do the touchpad, what I do is I do the L1 and L2. So for example, the touchpad here. And then to do the L3 and the R3, the clicking in, it's up to you, it depends on the game. For example, you can press A and B, or you can press A and X, you can do a combination of buttons. What I do is, I do these two buttons, for R3 and these two buttons for L3. Now it's not ideal, but it depends on the game. Some games, if I'm doing Drive Club, then I'm not really gonna need to use the R3 and L3 at all. But if I'm doing Horizon Zero Dawn, then you're constantly using them to be able to run. But uh, as I say, it does depend on the game. But you can get different brands of this. So this one is a Moga, but if you want a slightly better quality one, you can get this Logitech one which is this one here. Now this one was only 7.99, so just under eight UK pounds. Now it's nicely made and everything and it fits in there nicely. So you can see it just slots in there like so. So it kind of makes it like a, P a PS Vita in a way or a little Nintendo Switch. But the problem is, as you can see in this one, it hasn't got more shoulder buttons. It's only got the L1 and L2. You haven't got the trigger buttons. Also, you haven't got a left or right analog stick so you're really lacking in features here so something like this is going to be fine if you're doing emulators or really simple games really you're going to have to get yourself this other brand here the Moga but if you have a look here it doesn't work via Bluetooth it actually goes straight into the lightning connector and that in theory I suppose will produce a little bit less lag as well so really easy to do all you need to do is get your phone put it in there like so and just slide it out and then in and when it's in there there's a little lock at the back here so I'm just going to lock it into place and now that's not going to come out and if you have a look here I've got a button to turn it on and off one other thing that I didn't mention on both of these things they allow you to ch charge up your battery right okay so if I was to go 
here at the moment the battery is not charging you can see at the top there but if I was to put this switch over it will then start charging so this has I think it's an 1800 milliamp hour battery which is a bit more than that comes in the actual iPod itself so it's really useful if you find your battery is running low because if you're going to start you know doing remote play on this a lot you're going to go through the battery quite quickly but then what you can do is you just charge this up via a micro USB and then you'll get more hours out of your gameplay so at the moment I've got a bit of charge on there so I've just turned the battery off so by using this controller here it makes it so much more playable now if you're not keen on the look of these controllers or you have something newer than the iPhone 5 series like the iPhone 6 or 7 then what you can do is you can get Bluetooth controllers, Bluetooth MFI controllers. This particular one is an Android so ignore this, I just wanted to show it to you just so you understand what I mean. Basically they have a clip on the back so they come like that, you just open them up and then you can put any size of phone in there because you're not restricted because the clip is on a spring and these work via Bluetooth so rather than using the little lightning connector there and there they actually work via Bluetooth and you can get some really good ones, really expensive ones and really cheap ones, they vary. If for example you had something big like an iPad you can actually get these ones that clip onto the side of the iPad and then you use them similar to this but you use them on a big iPad so imagine this working on a lovely big iPad it would look really nice and they even sell these MFI controllers in places like the Apple Store. So obviously you can go online in places like Amazon and eBay, but you can even go down to the high street, go into your Apple Store and they've got a huge variety of them. The problem is the newer ones are more expensive. These are dirt cheap because now the iPhone 5 is kind of outdated. Right, if you go to set MFI shortcuts, then if I tap that, it will say analog stick L3 and you can set it to what you want. So at the moment I've got it set to L1 and L2 but let's say if I wanted to change that. You just tap that then you go to set new button combination and let's say if I wanted to do A and B. You just hold it down until the time runs out and there we go that is now the new button combination for L3 but I'm going to put it back to L1 and L2. There we go. Right, okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna now take this out and I'm gonna connect it up to my mobile cell phone and then uh, do remote play away from the Wi-Fi of the home. Now, if you're using a disc-based game, like I am on this Horizons, then obviously you have to have your disc in the PlayStation 4. But you can use your digital copies absolutely anywhere. So when I go out and about now, I've got a digital copy of Drive Club, which I'm gonna work, and I'm also gonna do the Horizon Zero Dawn. If you know, for example, that you wanna play, let's say, Minecraft, and that's on a disc, you're gonna to have to make sure you load up your disc before you go out of the house. And also, when you go down to close down your PS4, you have to just put it in standby mode. You can't power off completely. So now if I'm gonna close it down, go to power, and you see I'm just gonna enter rest mode. If I was to turn off PS4, then it's not gonna allow me to turn it back on remotely. So I'm just gonna go into enter rest mode. And now I will be able to turn that on Wherever I go, it doesn't matter, I will be able to turn that on via the iPod when it's connected to the hotspot. Obviously, if you've got an iPhone, you don't have to connect it to a hotspot because you've all got a cellular network built into the iPhone itself. Right, okay, I've gone out for a drive. I'm in the middle of nowhere now, but I have got a good mobile phone reception. So if you have a look there, I've got 4G there. So what I'm gonna do is, if you have a look, I've got no Wi-Fi connection here on the iPod. So I'm gonna connect it up to my cell phone. So let's just turn the hotspot on. Right, okay, so the hotspot's on now. You can see I've got the little circle symbol up there. And now, the iPod should connect up to it automatically. There we go. So can you see now, it's connected automatically. Right, so let's see if remote play works when we're out and about.
Now, if it doesn't go, often it doesn't go through the first time because it's waking up the PS4 and then I have to do it again. Let's see if it goes through this time. Right, failed to wake the PS4, so let's try it again. Failed to find the PS4, try it again. There we go. Okay, so it didn't work first time, but it worked third time, so you do have to give it a few goes. Just put a bit of volume up. Right, okay, so as you can see, sorry, I'm filming this on my own today, so, right, as you can see, I can move around the place, and now I showed you uh, Horizon Zero Dawn earlier. Let's do Drive Club. I'm just going to fast forward through this bit because it takes a while to load up, just like it would do if you were at playing it on your actual console. Right, while that's loading up, I'll just tell you a little bit about these. So, with these MFI controllers, as far as I know, none of them come with the L3 and R3 clicking. Now, that isn't just these controllers. Let's say the PS Vita as well, and that doesn't come with the R3 and the, R, the L3 pushing ones. So, you've got to use the touchscreen at the back. Now, it's really unfortunate. This does work really well. It's just unfortunate that Sony don't release it. And I think the reason they're doing it is... Lower that down. I think the reason they're doing it is because they're kind of forcing you to buy the PlayStation Vita or one of their Xperia phones, which is a real shame because if they allowed this on Android phones and iPhones, then uh, if anything, people might buy more games because then if you're working away from home a lot, then you'd be more inclined to buy digital copies of games and stuff. So you can do stuff like this. Put a bit of volume on it. And you can change the views, you can play everything just like it was at home. And as you can see, it works really well if I if you have a look at his hands and I move it left. See it's responsive. And if we want to go back to zero dawn, I can press the pause button, which brings up this menu here, or I can just use the touch screen. Go to the PlayStation in the middle, if I was to go back to Horizon Zero Dawn. I can't really comment about the battery life on these controllers at the moment because I haven't had it long enough. But on the time that I've been using it, I haven't let it go flat. But I've got a couple of hours out of it and I haven't had to charge it up. Uh, obviously, if you were going to be charging your iPod or your iPhone while using it, it's going to use up the battery a lot quicker on it. There you go, so £17 for this setup, £10 for the app and £7 for the controller. £10 for the app is going to be okay if you know you're going to get like three, four, five months out of it. But you could be unlucky and you could get it and then PlayStation will bring out an update and then it will make the app redundant and you might have only had it a few days, so obviously that's the risk you take. Uh, the £7 for the MOGA controller I think is an absolute bargain, especially the fact that it's got a battery built into it. So I hope you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up if this helps you out, and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.